AI is one of the most powerful tools that we have available to us in this day and age, and if you're not using it for your DevOps processes, then you need to get started. In this video, I'm going to show you Kubia, which considers itself the ChatGPT for DevOps. Getting started with Kubia is very simple. Simply go to their website, create a new account, and then use the Slack integration button to add it to your Slack organization. Once you have Kubia added to your Slack, you can start chatting to it right away and have it manage your infrastructure. Let's now have a look at how Kubia is set up for my environment to manage my Kubernetes cluster, my GitHub account, as well as my AWS environment. All right, so I'm in my Slack organization here and you can see I have Kubia as an app added into my Slack organization. And from here, I can start chatting with Kubia. So the first command that I always like to do to Kubia is slash agent. Agents are what you configure in Kubia to actually perform your work tasks. So I'm gonna go slash agent here. And from here, I'm gonna get a menu. Now I already have a few agents configured. Towards the end of the video, I'll show you how you configure your own agent uh, but if you already have one configured, just go to start an agent. And here you can see I have a bunch of different agents that do a bunch of different things for my different workflows. I'm going to choose here, uh, the one at the bottom here, my K8s agent. And this is just the agent I use for managing my Kubernetes cluster. So I'm going to launch a conversation with this particular agent, and I'm just going to ask it some general questions about my Kubernetes cluster here. All right, so anytime you start a new agent, it's going to create a new thread for you to have a conversation with it. So I'm going to open up this thread, and it's given me some messages on the type of things I can ask it. I'm just going to go ahead and ask it a question about my Kubernetes cluster. So I'm going to say, how many pods are currently running in my cluster? So I'll put that in and it'll take about 10 or so seconds here and it should return with the answer. All right, so it spat out a lot of information here. If you scroll up, you can see exactly what I asked it here. So I asked it how many pods are in my cluster and then it ran kube control get all pods. So it's smart enough to know how to get that answer. It ran that against my Kubernetes cluster and then here, here's the answer right here. It returned 20. So it counted 20 pods in my Kubernetes cluster. Let's go ahead and ask it one more question and then I'll show you how you can start actually provisioning resources using Terraform by just talking to Kubia. So let's ask it one more question here. Let's just say you wanted all the namespaces in your cluster. So I'll just go list all the namespaces and it should come up with the answer in a few seconds here. All right, so it generated the answer there. It took about 10 or so seconds. It's not as quick as running a kube control get namespaces command, but you have to remember it has to go through an LLM to actually translate my question and then convert it to the command and then run the command and then return the answer. So it does take a little bit longer than just running a kube control command, but it does everything for you. So I'm fine with that uh, trade-off. Here we can see we get all the namespaces in my Kubernetes cluster. So it did exactly what I asked it for. And now it's asking me what I should do next. I'm actually going to go ahead and get started with the Terraform here. So let's actually talk to my Terraform agent because I've just separated these tasks out into separate different agents. I'm going to go in here with my main Kubia chat and I'm just going to type agent. And from here, I'll talk to one of my Terraform agents. So I have a Terraform agent here called Terraform Provisioner. And then from there, I'm just gonna hit launch Terraform Provisioner. It's gonna start up the agent, and then I'm gonna hop into the conversation there. So in the thread here, let's just go ahead and ask it what to create in AWS, and it'll create it using Terraform. So I'm just gonna say, create me an ECR registry using Terraform. And that should be good enough. It may ask me one or two follow-up questions, but let's just see what it returns with here. All right, so QB responded here, and you can see it's ready to create that ECR registry, but it's just telling me about all the different variables that I can set, all the different parameters. Uh, I've created a lot of ECR registries, and usually the only thing I really set is the name of the registry. So I've just responded uh, with, Name should be Python app one, and it should be on US West one. And then just use the defaults for the rest. So I'll just put that in here, and that should be enough information for QB to actually create the ECR registry. So let's just go ahead and watch QB do it. 
All right, so it looks like QB has finished provisioning my ECR registry in AWS. And if I pull up the AWS console, you can see it right there. It created an ECR registry named Python app one. All right, so one more thing you can do with Cubia is have it actually schedule tasks and then just do them on a scheduled basis. So if you want to do that, just go into QB and then send the slash agent command. And then from there, you can see schedule tasks. So if you go there, you can see your active tasks. These are the ones you've already configured. But if you want to configure a new one, just go to schedule task. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that. And this can be any task that any of your agents can already perform. So this could be to provision Terraform, run a backup, or just run some sort of health check. So I have one that I like doing here. So I'm just going to say, make sure that all pods are healthy on my cluster and then just send that message to one of my channels. So by default, it'll just send it in the QB conversation, but you could change this to one of your Slack channels. I'm just going to keep it in my regular QB conversation. And then from here, I'm going to choose my agent. So I have an agent specifically configured to run these tasks with the appropriate permissions. So I'm just going to choose kubecron agent. And then I'm just going to uh, schedule the task here. And you can set it to either be daily, weekly, or monthly. So I'll just go daily and hit submit. And now I have a job that's going to go ahead and check my Kubernetes cluster once a day, just to make sure that all the pods are healthy. And now you can see that it's running the job and the output's going to be in this thread. Now, QBA does come with a web interface. So instead of having to do all your configuration through Slack, you can use the web interface to do some of your configurations. So this is what the web interface looks like for my account. And you can see that it has statistics, logs, and data about all the different tasks that you have run and all the successes, failures, and basically everything you'd want to know about what QB is doing in your environment. Now, if you go over to connections, this is where you actually integrate all your different environments with Cubia. So you can see my GitHub is integrated, Kubernetes is integrated, and AWS is integrated. And of course, Cubia supports a lot of different platforms. So if you wanted a different platform connected, you would just go new connection and you would just find the platform that you're looking for. So tons of different platforms are supported by Cubia, and I'm sure they're going to be adding more and more in the future. Now, that's all I really wanted to show with the web interface. I just mostly wanted people to know that it actually exists. So if you can't really figure something out in the Slack agent, go ahead and check out the web interface. Now, let's get into actually configuring agents as this is going to be sort of the bread and butter of what a DevOps engineer does to actually get Cubia up and running. You want to configure your agents and then you can have your users talk to your agents to actually perform the work. All right, so back in Cubia, what you'll want to do is uh, start another conversation with QB and then just use the agent command. And this is where you actually configure your agents. So you can hit start an agent and then from here it's going to have the option to create a new one and from here we're going to go self-hosted you have the option to use hosted by cubia but since we have our own kubernetes cluster that cubia can run from i'm just going to go self-hosted and you should get a pop-up and this is where you actually put all the configuration details for your agent. So it's done through Slack. It's very simple to do. Let's give our agent a name. And I'm just going to call it uh, our Kubernetes read only agent. And then uh, we're going to put it in our test environment here. And then for the agent description, this is what your end users are going to see. We're going to say this gives you read only access to the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, most of these we can just leave as default. Uh, you can see who will be able to access this agent. So you can add your Slack users or groups. I'm just going to leave it as nothing. So everyone has access. That's fine with me. And then uh, down here, you can see the agent instructions prompt. So it actually gives you 
some defaults here that you can just keep, but usually you're gonna wanna change this to actually customize what your agent can actually do. So let's change this agent's instructions to say, you have read only access to the cluster. You can help users run cube control get and describe commands let them get any information they need. So that should be good enough instructions for QB to go with. And then here under integrations, wanna make sure to integrate this with Kubernetes and that should be good enough. I'll go ahead and create that agent and then we'll go ahead and test it out. All right, so the agent has been created. Let's go ahead and hit start agent and the agent should be starting up here. And let's just go into the Slack thread and start talking to it and the agent is started up. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that command that we ran earlier, how many pods are currently running in my cluster. So we'll go ahead and ask this question. And there we go, it's gone ahead and it's gone to my Kubernetes cluster and it has found out how many pods are running in my cluster and it's listed them all out to me. So that's how simple it is to create an agent and you can completely customize these agents on the tasks that you actually want them to be able to perform for your users. So anyways, that's all I really wanted to show for this video. If you have any questions about Cubia and how you can get started with it, please leave me a comment below and I'll try to get back to you. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.